I'm Larry Chen. I've been shooting car culture all over the world for the past 18 years. From the best builds to the fastest races, I've seen it all. In this series, I'm highlighting the gearheads that inspire me in our generation. Growing up, I spent so much of my free time watching imported Japanese DVDs of JDM cars absolutely ripping on track. These cars were entirely unobtainable for me at the time, but so very much desirable. Now that the dust has settled a bit, I find myself back in Japan, again. This time, I'm with my good friend Dino Dali Carbonari. Dino has called Japan home for the majority of his life, and he's at the forefront of spreading Japanese car culture to the Western audience. From major shops like Spoon and Mines to the smallest one you haven't heard of, Dino has covered it all. Today, the two of us are actually following up on a car that's been a few years in the making, a Honda of all things. But this isn't just another Honda. This is one reimagined by Spoon Sports. With the help from Built by Legends, Spoon has over-engineered this Honda Civic to be the best example of what an EG6 can possibly be. It also might be the most expensive EG6 of all time. You know, Dino, it's very fitting that you showed up to the shoot with a shirt with your face on it. It's all about branding, isn't it? While we're standing next to a brand new R35 GTR T-Spec, this episode is not actually about this beautiful ride. We should take a look first, at least. Yeah. This episode is about an EG6 Honda Civic. And it's not fair to call this a modified Civic. This is more like a transformed vehicle. Yeah, it's basically taking, you know, the cars that me and you grew up, kind of like idolizing and making the best possible version of them. We've been lucky to follow along with a couple of their builds. Specifically, last time we were in Japan, we had a chance to shoot their Civic in progress at Spoon. And it was so insane to me to see a Honda Civic with carbon floors, carbon chassis bits. I've never seen anything like that because as we know, the Honda Civic, especially the EG, was a pedestrian car. It was never meant to be something special. It was never meant to have a carbon chassis. It's been almost two and a half years since I've seen this. And the last time I saw this, it was at Spoon. It was on jack stands. It was far from a running car. Now this runs. Yes, yes, it does. I mean, it's uh, obviously it's still work in progress. We haven't done much to the exterior of the car, but yes, the car does run now. Uh, we've already done some testing with uh, Ichishima-san at the wheels. I've actually had a chance to drive your other Built by Legends completed vehicle. I had a chance to drive your R32. Today, I'm gonna have a chance to drive this prototype. I'm really excited about that. So I love Hondas, but for whatever reason, you know, I've never owned one, but this one is the ultimate Honda. Tell us some of the basic things right off the bat, what you've done to this. This is the exhaust manifold that you probably shot back in, you know, back two and two and a half years ago. Yeah, uh, this is actually interesting in that this is a modified vehicle that was designed around the header. Yeah, more or less, yes. Um, when we decided to build the EG and uh, started our discussion with uh, Ichishima-san, founder of Spoon, this exhaust was his idea. He wanted to do this. Uh, why? Because uh, the racing cars back then were running on these type of uh, exhaust manifolds and he wanted to try them on a street car because we were telling him that we wanted to build a street car that's 
you know, fun on track, that's good on the street, and, you know, drivable as a daily. So the question is, this B-series motor, it can fit here yes. without the headers, right? It, if can. it just If it just had normal headers that like went underneath, underneath right. it can fit in it, mm -hmm. but it sits a little tall. Right, exactly. And you did all of this just so it sits lower. Because we have this exhaust manifold that goes to the side, there's no, nothing underneath the engine. So we were able to lower the engine by 40 millimeters. The main purpose of that is to bring down the center of gravity of the car. Because of the way the headers are shaped or configured, we had to renew all the water line and also the, uh, the position of the radiator. And we also uh, need to move, like let's say the air conditioning, it's a street car, so we need the AC. So we had to figure out all that. That's why it's been taking us so long to just uh, test the car. As if the headers weren't crazy enough, the thing that really blows my mind about this vehicle is the integrated carbon in the chassis. The shock towers down all the way to the floor, all of that is carbon. Yes, that's the, the second highlight of the car. In a way that's probably never been done in, on a street car at least. Because our concept was to build a racing car, we didn't want to, let's say, put in roll bars into the car. We wanted to make sure that the car was comfortable. Uh, you know, the car had enough room for uh, at least four passengers. So that's why we tried to figure out how we could make the car's chassis more rigid without putting things on, you know, that would get in the way of people. Because the, the chassis itself is now really rigid. The weight distribution at the front, right and left, is a perfect 50-50. When you're driving it around, do you actually notice the stiffness as yes. a streetcar? Uh-huh, you do. Let's say you, uh, you're, you're pulling out of a gas station going over, over the bump, you'll notice that the car doesn't uh, flex. This is not just modified. This is completely transformed from the ground up. After you're done with this, it will essentially be almost like a new car. We stripped the car down to its chassis. We've been doing the reinforcements with carbon fiber and we'll do the exterior and also the interior. It will be almost uh, a new car. Plus the engine is new, yes. So tell us about the brand new engine in here. Uh, it's a Spoon B18C engine. It could rev out to about 8,500, I think. Right now we're testing it at 8,000. Did you have a chance to dyno this? No, not yet. What's your estimate? It outputs about 220 horsepower. And in this configuration, I know it's not done yet. I know it's a prototype. How much does this weigh? As of now, it weighs about 970 kilos, but that's obviously without the, uh, the rear seats and all the, the rest of the interior panels that's not on yet. So all said and done, once this is a complete vehicle, it should be a little bit over a thousand. Probably, KG. yes, probably. Let's talk about the interior. I know this is a big highlight for this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Now you can see the, the rest of the carbon floor, which comes from uh, the firewall all the way back to the behind the front seats. Right now, the only thing that you have are the prototype door panels, the yes. custom door panels that uh, you guys have. Mm -hmm. But everything else in the vehicle, gauges, seats, steering wheel, everything is just temporary for the prototype. And you have- and for, for testing. Right, for testing. And you have um, custom one-off pieces for all of this stuff. Yes, yes. We will uh, install them once we're all finished with the uh, testing the performance of the car. So after this, once it's all proven, said and done, you've done all your testing, you're gonna strip all this down to bare metal. Yes. We will take out the engine. We will take out the suspension and everything and we'll do the exterior next. I think the interior parts will go in at the, the very last stage. And you replace all of this stuff with brand new Honda OEM parts? Brand new OEM parts and also like, let's say the rear wing, it'll be a spoon rear wing. Uh, the front bumper will be a custom front bumper. The fender is a spoon fender, which is on each side, it's about 10 millimeters wider. What's amazing to me is that there is a market for this kind of vehicle. The people that watched this vehicle, you know, as they were growing up, maybe they couldn't afford it, maybe they couldn't build it the way they wanted to build it. Now they've grown up, you know, become professionals, and now they can afford what they want to afford. 
This is essentially the ultimate version of this vehicle. Perhaps, yes, yes. It's one version, I think. We're not really sure if there is a market for a Civic that's at that price level. We just started the project because we wanted to build a special EG6 Civic with, uh, with Spoon. Let's talk about the wheel, tire, suspension, combo. All of this is something that you're testing on this vehicle. The wheel is, uh, of course, they are SWs from Spoon. The suspension wise, it's all related to the chassis actually. Because the car is uh, rigid, it has a rigid chassis. We were thinking that we would be able to go down on the spring rates. And also we wanted to make full use of the rigid chassis. So we didn't want any other parts that would delete the advantages that's coming out of this, the rigid chassis. So we haven't uh, changed the geometry, but we have put in, we have replaced all the uh, bushings to uh, pillow joints on the front and the rear. Because we've all uh, installed pillow joints on, on the rear, we've deleted the um, compensator arm because it does, we don't really need it anymore. So we haven't changed the geometry, but we have changed a lot of parts. So much of this build is just based off balance. It's not like one thing is overpowering the other. It's not like you have a crazy turbo engine in this. No, no. It's just about balance, driving feel, and it's just overall a very well put together package. It doesn't even have an aftermarket intake, right? Or it has a, like a spoon, yeah. street style intake. We're following Spoon's concept, which is that they, they feel that the originally Honda designed are well designed for uh, efficiency and also durability. Even on their track cars or their demo cars, they've never changed that. Well, thank you so much for showing us this build. I'm really excited to take this out on the road and drive it for myself. Big car problems. Where's the seatbelt? Oh, is this a stock seatbelt? Especially when they paint it like white. It's just be like a regular right. Civic. But it's gonna be so, well, it, it just sounds so good. Just from the limited amount of driving I've done so far. Well, once we get on the highway, we can open it up a bit. And oh yeah. Get the full uh, We'll full hit effect. that VTEC. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's not even that much 
much power, but no, it's, just it's not. So it's good. Just the, the sound is yeah. is like music, you know. Totally. It doesn't have that much power at all, but that's kind of the point. Much VTEC. I just, there's so many things I want to say about it. Of course, the sound, the music that it makes is unbelievable. It's a musical instrument. <laughs> and it, it's actually way more refined than I expected it to be because I heard the car out on track at Scuba and it sounded loud. I was like, oh my God, it's going to be so bad in the car but it's just spot on. Yeah, in the car, it's not bad. I can't imagine what it sounds from the outside. It's louder. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit louder, but... But in a good way. It has such a defined B-series tone, yeah. and man, on the highway, especially when it hits VTEC, the tone changes so drastically, it sounds so good. We're not actually going that fast, but it feels like we're going fast. And that's the point of cars like this. Yeah. The excitement comes without you going too crazy and maybe potentially getting in trouble, right? It's the balance. It is the feeling, the driving feeling. I could drive this every day. I don't know about you. Oh, I could too. And I think with cars like these, you always get the feel that you're really going almost 100% and you don't feel guilty about it. Because if you did it with the GTR that we're driving today, oh. you'll be in, you'll be in jail. Like oh yeah, we we would be so, in trouble pretty quick. Yeah. Unfortunately, the seat doesn't adjust too much, so you can't actually drive it today. I, I think it's more of a, <laughs> a width issue, but yeah, we'll get there another day. Hopefully, when they get their actual seat in here, you can drive it. But we have a lot of other things to shoot in Japan, so looking forward to that. Thank you so much for coming out yeah, and was. showing me around all over the place and taking me to build by life. My pleasure, man. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching my new Haggerty show. I really wanted to feature automotive trendsetters in our generation. Without Pennzoil, this series wouldn't be possible. They are enthusiasts like us. They believe in car culture and they want to keep it alive. Pennzoil supports a lot of racing, drifting and hill climb and everything in between. They also support a lot of our friends. On top of that, we run Pennzoil in all of our project cars. I hope you like this content because we have a lot coming your way.